I mean, the information is always currency, right? And they and they all had all of the information. Right. And that's one thing I remember when I first came out here. Someone told me, like, if you want to figure out what you want to do, get yourself onto a high volume agent's desk, and you will first of all know everything about the business, and second of all, it will help you figure out what you want to do really, really quickly. Yeah. So that was some good advice that I did not take. I wish um, I had that. that I did. I wish, I, I, wish uh, I had that advice when boo. I came out here. No one told me anything. Boo. Uh, I I wish I had taken that advice, but I think you know everybody kind of finds their own path and figures it out right. on their own. Took but me about clearly, years. you're doing good work because <laughs> if you're doing shoddy work, they don't they don't hire you right to, for the next job. They don't, oh, but wait till you hear what happened on this this interview. All right, I'm listening. So I so I get this interview to uh, be an assistant at the WB Network. And uh, very excited for it. And I go in and I meet the woman. And, uh, and they want to hire me. And they want to hire me. And, and I had interviewed for another job at Paramount at the time, at the studio. And, uh, and the woman at the WB was like, you know, I'd love to have you work here. And I said to her, to her face, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure... I really want to work in features. Oh. So I actually passed on the job to pursue the Paramount job. And looking back, is, do you think that's the right choice or would you do it different? Looking back, it was the right choice. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. Because what I figured out was what I didn't know on that Paramount job, hmm. which didn't last long, by the way. Because... When you say Paramount job, do you get the job and they put you on a feature film or are you working in all of casting like Paramount's like network of whatever they got coming up? So they, they put me, I was working for the head of feature film casting at Paramount got at it. the time who also cast individual films for Paramount who was also on like the creative executive team. She was also a creative executive at the time. And so, um, so I went from you know, jumping around these desks in New York where I was sort of making the rules and setting the tone and setting up what the desk was to high-powered executive at Paramount Features. And I was in over my head. I was in way over my head. I didn't understand sort of the way Hollywood worked at the time and the way the business worked. So, I, you know, I specifically remember my first week there uh, just being overwhelmed and not knowing things that now I look back on it and they seem simple, but I didn't really understand like how messengers worked. Right. Right. And, and. Or just the etiquette or the language or yes, the rhythm. I, yeah. I, it's I a lot to figure out. I didn't know my way around. And I remember that first week, like losing like an audition and I, I'm not going to say who it was, but it was an A-list Damn. actor's audition Damn. for a very high-level film. And I lost it. You and lost, like, what, their VHS tape? It, yes, I lost it. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't even know the concept of tracking something down. I didn't know how to do it. And somehow it turned up at the end of the day. But I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life as, like, when I lost that tape. That's amazing and terrifying. It, it, it was terrifying. And I remember calling Phyllis Huffman and just saying, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I, I, I'm like... Are you still juggling at that point a desire to, to move towards directing? Or have you laid that to bed and said, no, this is what I want to do? I'm just looking at what's directly ahead of me. I'm in survival mode right Copy. now. I'm in survival mode, like making a few hundred bucks a week. And when I got that Paramount job, leased a car, and it was just kind of like... How can I pay rent and pay the lease on this car and have enough money left for gas? Wow. That's where I am at the time. And uh, so that job, I learned that I didn't know anything on that job. I learned how much I didn't know. And so I called Phyllis Huffman, who I look back on now. like She was like a fairy godmother yeah, to yeah. me at the time. And she was like, we got to get you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> 